is saving money with Jazzy. Um, so I didn't do a um, so I found out I was five weeks um, miss period, so five weeks pregnant technically. So I was gonna update you guys on the symptoms I've been feeling. So in the morning, it's not really like sick um, morning sickness. It's more like nauseated, um, appetite's the same. I can that I can think of. It's the same. We have hasn't really. But the other night, the other night, that's how I knew I was pregnant because my husband went to Arby's and I asked him to get me a double cheddar and a gyro. And I ate both of them. So, yeah, I knew. I knew right there I was pregnant. Plus, I had a weird dream the day of, that the day that I bought the pregnancy. In the morning, I had a weird dream. I had a dream like I was laying, on, laying in bed and I felt like something moving in my stomach. It's so weird. But... I know my mom told me before, um, when you're pregnant, you get like you have like crazy dreams. But with Mia and Isaac, I didn't. I don't remember having. No wait, Isaac, I did have a crazy dream. Um, Isaac, actually, he's my first child. Um, when I was about to have him, I was like eight months, nine months, almost gonna pop. I had a dream that um, God was holding him, like a man, long hair. I couldn't see faces. Um, he was holding a baby, and it was a blue cover wrapped around him. And I could see a bunch of hair, and then when I try to walk up to see his face, I couldn't see his face. Um, so I think that was the last dream I had that was crazy while I was pregnant. Um, and then I had Isaac shortly after that. So, yeah, you do have crazy dreams. I didn't believe it till that until I thought about it. Um, something else, maybe. Oh yeah, I'm not really a coffee drinker. Not a lot, like all the time. I don't know if the creamer messes me up. So, this morning at work, I made myself a cup of coffee. It's so weird. I don't ever drink coffee. Um, and all day, I was just, like, in a, like, content mood. Because you would think I would be, like, shocked. Maybe I am shocked, and I just don't realize that it's, like, so real. Like, it really, I'm really pregnant. Because I tried for so long, and now I'm, it happened, and I'm like, holy crap, I'm pregnant. So, yeah, my five-week update, there's not really anything that has changed. Everything's been... Oh, I've been using the restroom a lot, number two, and usually I don't do it as much. I maybe like once a day, twice a day, but this is like constantly. I don't know why. So I wonder if that's part of if that's like a pregnancy symptom. I gotta look it up. But I'm gonna download the app. Um, I think it's called Baby Center, um, and then start monitoring my pregnancy because that app's really cool. The app will show you like how the baby sizes is moving and then it'll tell you like the size of a pee it's really cool like I, I use it for Mia and it tells you like what to expect every week and how the baby's um, progressing every week you know the changes um, what to expect um, so I like it you know since I have to do like the whole 10 week wait to see a doctor um, like I said on the previous video I'm gonna think about I'm um, using a midwife you know I heard it's something more like more more like I don't know how to explain it it's more like intimate like you it's a plus it's a woman you know I have no problem with men doctors that was my last doctor he was a male um, but I think a woman will understand more you know more I don't know they're more understanding I think because they're women themselves so like they understand what's going on um, plus you know when I did have Mia um, my doctor has a partner like when Casey's not there like then she'll take over so what happened was I had went in the night before he had to leave for vacation it was his birthday time I mean it's like the last month the beginning of September and he was like I'll be back I'll be back um before you have your daughter and he said if when I get back and you haven't had her I'm gonna induce you and you so you can have her and I was like okay and why is it the same night he left I go into labor so I thought I was just upset because I was like, I want him to deliver, you know, I was just expecting him to do it. But his partner was really nice. She was a lady. Um, she, she was really cool because I wanted Isaac to be in the room when I delivered. Not so much to be like all up in there and watching, but just to be in there to experience his sister being born, you know, since he's the older brother. So I had Ryan. So I was there. What time did we go? We went in. Mia was born the 29th, so the 28th at night, like around 11, my water broke at home. Um, so then, you know, we 
we took off. We went to my mom's house. We dropped off Isaac and picked up my mom. And my mom was like, it's time, it's time. I'm like, yes, it's time. You know, my water was, I never experienced my water breaking by myself. I usually, with Isaac, I had to go to the, to the ER and they broke the remainder of the bag. I don't understand it. I don't get it. But my grandma, I told my grandma, I'm like, I'm suffering. I need to have Isaac now. It's time. And Isaac was a day late, actually. He wasn't trying to come out. And my grandma told me, I know a way you can do it. Um, just try it out. I'm like, okay. She said to go in a, go get a bath running of hot water, as hot as you can take it, and throw in some rubbing alcohol and sit in there. And I was like, oh, my God, this is not going to work, Grandma. Because I tried everything. Yerba buena, which is like, um, how can you explain it? It's like a tea. It's like an herb that you drink. And that I think that helped me contract more to where I was like, I couldn't take it. I drank that after the shower. So I got out of the shower and I didn't notice water because I was like, I just, I'm getting out of the shower. So that's just from the shower, I got, I thought. But my grandma was right. You know, I did break it, but not all the way. Just um, I was just leaking, leaking, leaking um, little by little. So it wasn't all the way broken. So I was like, oh, my God. But it was broken enough to where I had a, I changed every single pants in my closet. I was I used them all. They got wet. I couldn't move. I didn't want to move because I kept leaking. Then my mom had me outside in the middle of the night going up and down the street and timing my contraction. She's like, it's not time. It's not time. They're not close. So I'm like, take me. <laughs> so I was crying and I would go sit next to mom and dad's bed. And my dad would be like, just take her already. She's ready. She's in pain. Take her. And I just didn't let them sleep. And mom's like, I'll take her in the morning. I'll take her in the morning. So then in the morning, around like, I think it was seven o'clock. I was like, I couldn't. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't even remember sleeping that night. That whole night I was up. And my mom takes me, but I swear she took this road with all the holes in the road. Like, all the little, I don't know what they're called, like, little holes from the water, from the rain. Every hole, bam, water, some water would come out. Bam, water would come out. I'm like, Mom! And she's like, what? And she, I know she knows what she was doing, but she did it on purpose. So, we go to the hospital, and I'm like, I'm for sure, like, in labor. Like, I, I, can, I, I just couldn't take the pain. Plus, I can't take pink regardless. Like, I'm not, I'm a chicken. Um, so, we go to the hospital. And they're like, oh, you're only a, um, at three centimeters. You got to go back home. I'm like, I'm not going back home. That's definitely not going to happen. So, they told me, walk around the hospital, you know, to help me dilate. And once I get to a four, they'll get me a room. But so, when they're checking me out, they completely broke my water. So, they're like, definitely you can't go anywhere. Because when your water breaks, you have so many um, hours that you can have that happen. And you have to have the baby in so many hours from that so they're like well yeah you're not going anywhere since your water broke and I'm like okay but they still wanted me to walk around this, the hospital so I can try to get myself to dilate it so I did that and it, it helped a little bit but Isaac was like the longest labor I feel and I think since he's my first one it was longer to me with my first time so I was like I didn't know what to expect but Isaac I don't remember it being a bad labor I just remember they gave me the upper dural Right, and it was only me and my mom in the hospital the whole time until he was born and the family came in. But me and my mom were there the whole time, and the nurse was like, "You want an upper dural?" Like, "Yes, I want an upper dural. Like, I really want it." And I was like, "At seven centimeters," and they're like, "You can't after a certain point. You can't have the upper dural." So they gave it to me, and then they were telling me, "Oh, you're gonna, you know, feel numbness. You're gonna get numb in your um, one side of your body or all." bottom half of your body I'm like okay cool I just don't want to be in pain you know so I felt it numbing up and then I think it was just my right my left leg did not numb so I could feel everything in my left leg so I can hold prop it open I mean prop it open prop it up and then my left side was numb like asleep I couldn't even hold it or anything it was just swinging there so when it came time to push my mom's job was to hold the when that was asleep like to prop it up so I could push and the nurse had the other side, you know, and that one she didn't really have to do much because I, I could feel in that one. So I remember I was screaming. My mom says, I, I reminded her of the exorcist. Like one minute I was fine, then I started going cr crazy on the bed. Like couldn't stay still. I was trying to jump off the bed. I don't remember none of that. I don't. And she was like, yeah, you were nuts. And then you were yelling at me. She goes, but when the nurse was there, you wouldn't say nothing. But when they would leave, you'd be screaming at me. Like get them to give me medicine. And I was like, no. But I, I see myself doing that. So my mom goes, yeah, the nurse was in here. You're being so nice to them. And you're just being polite and say, please, um, it's hurting a lot. And then once they leave you, scream at me like the exorcist. I'm like, okay, well, I don't remember that part. 
I'm sure it happened like in labor. So Isaac came and then after that it was like a good a good recovery, you know, he was born six pounds five ounces, so he was a little baby, but they say that's what happens when like you're first born. They're pretty pretty small, you know. And he was really long though, twenty two inches. And he's very tall now, so yeah. So anyways, um with Mia my water broke at home and then we headed to the hospital and this is my first time going to a whole different hospital to St. Mark's because usually I go to University of Utah and that's where I usually have my my baby that's where I had Isaac I didn't like it because they have a lot of students um, so I didn't like that kind of you're having like a student and what if they mess up or what if they don't know something or I just didn't I didn't like it when I had Isaac because there's a lot of students and they're asking questions and there were like a bunch of people in the room watching and I'm like I don't no thanks but I was in pain so I didn't care but this time around I was like no I don't want to I don't want to do that so I said okay let's go to St. Mark's and then so it was late at, we got to the hospital like at 11 30 at night and I was like I was cool I wasn't in pain it didn't really hurt it was just like contractions here and there like sharp pains in my stomach I was like oh, okay I felt that one and then we got there they admitted me they're like okay your water um broke so I said okay and then they're, so I wasn't dilating as fast as they wanted me to. So they started giving me that, um, what was it called? Mil uh, no. That stuff they put in the IV to progress the contraction, or progress the, the dilation quicker. I guess, I don't remember what it's called. But they were giving me a little by little, and I wasn't dilating at all. It was like a four for a while, and it took forever to go to five. And then they, they bumped up the dose. And I like shot up to like six and that's when I was like, oh my gosh, I couldn't take it. I just started crying. Plus my husband was there and my mom. So I was like trying to be Mrs. Strong and like, not cry. But I was like feeling it. I was, they were both passed out and I was like crying. I was like, it hurt so bad. But I didn't want to have an epidural. I wanted to see how far I could go natural. And I was trying to do it natural. And the, doctor, and the nurse would come in and give me some kind of pain medicine that was safe. And that was helping me through it. Like they would give it to me and I was good for a little bit. You know, it was, it was helping with the contractions. Not until I got like to eight, you know, then that's when I was like, oh, okay, yeah. But it took me until to get to eight, I was like seven o'clock in the morning. So it took all night long to dilate. It was crazy, it was long. And so then my son had to go to school, it was a Friday. So I told my husband like, go take Isaiah to school. And then, cause the doctor was like, oh, you're not gonna have the baby in the, Right away, it's going to take a minute, you know, take a while. It's probably going to take all day. I was like, okay, then Isaac can go to school, and then we'll pick him up, and then he can come with the baby, be here when the baby's born. So I told um, my husband, I was like, it's time to go pick up Isaac. So it was like around 12 o'clock, and he had to go get him. He gets out at one thirty. So he goes, and the nurse was like, yeah, you, can, you have a while, you know. And my doctor was in the other room doing a six section, and I swear everyone chose to have the baby on the same day because she was busy. She was going jumping from room to room. C-section, deliver, deliver, deliver. And she was like, no, you're going to be a while, Jasmine. So she didn't really focus on me as much. And so I was like, okay, so I was just chilling, you know. And we had only one phone at that time, and I had the phone. So I don't know why I had the phone. He didn't take it. But he was like, okay, I'm going to go to the bank, go to Walmart, get Isaac, and then come back. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, I'm not worried about it. I wasn't going to have the baby anytime soon. Why is it that I almost had the baby without them there? So the nurse comes in, I tell the nurse, you know, the, the epidurals weren't off. It's not working anymore. I, I, it's hurting. And she's like, let me check you. She goes, oh, wow, Jasmine, you're almost out of 10. And I was like, no, they're not here yet. And she's like, what? I'm like, Ryan's not here. My my husband's not here. My son's not here. She can't come out yet. I want them to be here. And she's like, well, honey, I'm sorry. I can't stop it from happening. I'm like, no, I can't. And I just like try to not push, but you can't help it when you're in that position. So and they had had me on the first floor so I could see when the people were passing by. And then I seen Ryan and Isaac pass by. I'm like, come on. Like, in my mind, I was like, hurry up. And so they walk in, and I'm like, babe, I'm about to have the baby. Like, hurry up. And he's like, really, really? And I'm like, yeah. And the nurse had left, so it was just me and the, me, Ryan and Isaac in the room. And I told Ryan, check me. And he's like, okay. And he's, like, checking down there. He's like, what am I checking for? I was like, the baby's head. He's like, no, I don't see the baby's head. And then when he was looking, the doctor comes in, and she goes, hey, that's my job. And he's like, oh, sorry. She told me to check to see if the baby was coming because she could feel it. And I was like, oh, man, it's embarrassing. So the doctor was like, yeah, you're ready to go. You're ready to push. I'm like, yeah. So I think I had, like, I propped myself upwards like this, like, sitting up basically because I felt like more, I could push more like that. It was I couldn't lay flat, flat back and push. I couldn't get a grip on it. 
So I sat up and I pushed like once and she was like, okay, hey, hold on. And I pushed twice. And then my husband was sitting over me and he was like, I'm going to pass out. Like he doesn't do well with blood and stuff. So I'm looking at him to make sure he doesn't pass out. Cause I'm like, I need you to, I'm, go I'm going off of his face impressions. Like what's going on? Cause I can't see nothing. So he just like looks down like that. And I'm like, what, what's wrong? And the doctor's like, oh, her little cords around her neck, but don't worry. Um, she'll be fine and like they took her so she wasn't blue or nothing so I must have been on her way out she must have got um, tangled I believe because I've seen babies that had their cord wrapped around them they're all blue when they come out and she wasn't um, so when she got out she was screaming her head off and that's different for me because Isaac when he was born he didn't cry and I was, I was worried I was like he's not crying until they started cleaning him up and suctioning then he started freaking out I was like okay I'm relieved now but Mia was screaming her head off so I'm like okay she was ready to come out it took only three pushes for Mia, so I was like, oh, I was, she was ready to come out. Um, and she was um, 6 pounds, 12 ounces, so she was the same, basically the same size as Isaac. Um, and that was a, a good delivery as well. It, it felt like it was fast, and it didn't hurt as much. Um, and they always say that, like, after the first one, it's easy breezy. I'm like, no, it's not. So probably this third one will be... A different you know experience with like a midwife I, I've seen um, videos on YouTube about midwives like I think they're more like it looks like a home like like your bedroom um, kind of thing like kind of feeling and they're more like I don't know cuz I want to try like a water of what is it called a water birth I think that would be cool but then I just freak out like how oh, does that work like when the baby comes out and I was talking to my mom today at work I was like mom what if I do a water birth but then what's gonna happen when she goes, Jasmine, they live in water. I mean, they, they're, 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 um, what is it called? They're in your stomach, they're in liquid, and they just come out into water. I was like, yeah, but still, like, well, don't they drown and stuff? She's like, oh my god, Jasmine. I was like, I don't know, I have a lot of questions I didn't think that would be an option, you know? I didn't think I could, I had to think about a midwife or water birth or none of that stuff, because I thought it wasn't in my cards to get pregnant anymore. So, um, so I talked a little bit about it and I was like, you know what, I'll just do it because my insurance that I have now, um, my doctor that I had for me, it does not take it. And I was like, oh man, because I really wanted to go there again, but have the female, the lady that, that delivered me, have her be my OB instead of the male. So when they told me no, I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? Like I have to search for a doctor, I have to like read reviews, ask people like, where did they go? Like, I hate it. So I just looked around and I was just put my insurance inside of Google and just search like where can I get care from and they you know Intermountain was one of them so I've never been up to Intermountain Hospital like that and there's like a little section where it's a midwife area so I'm curious to see how it goes you know but you know at the end of the day if it doesn't feel right I can always leave I can always go somewhere else so I just want to try it out see how it is maybe I'll like it more comforting you know like I don't like a lot of people in my room you know and it seems like it's going to be more homey like more relaxed so that's what I want. Since it's going to be my last one, why not, you know, be done in style. So, yeah, that's that happened today. I called and I scheduled an appointment. They um, were asking me, like, when was my last day of my period? And really, to be honest, I don't remember. I just remember I asked Ryan the other day. I was like, babe, when did I have my period? Like, do you remember? And, like, we had recorded a video. Um, if you see, haven't seen it on my playlist, I have the one that says something funny. Um, that date was a, November 18th. Um, and it was like two days before my last day of my period. So I just went off of that date. Um, and then the nurse on the phone, you know, calculated. She's like, well, you're about five weeks, you know. And we don't see patients until they're 10 weeks. So I have to wait till January 21st to have my first appointment. So I figured I would, you know, just make these um, bi-weekly updates to see if anything progresses. Um, as far as like um, pregnancy symptoms. But to be honest, I haven't felt anything. And it's usually this is how it goes until they tell me, Jalen, you're pregnant. And then all hell breaks loose and I'm like sick in the morning, at night. Yeah, right now it's just nauseated. Maybe a little bit of cravings. Um, and I, oh yeah, and yesterday, I don't know what got into me, but I wanted to clean out the cabinets and I was cleaning. Yeah, I was just going, I don't know what was wrong with me. It's probably because I'm pregnant. Um, so... Yeah, that was my five-week update, guys. Um, I will come up with one for next week for my six-week and then see if anything has changed as far as symptoms or anything um, comes up. So 
yeah just keep tuned guys and if you guys like this video please put a thumbs up and subscribe you know and welcome to the family if you are and if you're not come on what are you waiting for so yeah that's my five week update guys and you guys have a good night and i will be on here next week about the same time guys have a good one